Hi, Scott Seaton here, music director of the North State Symphony. And today we are doing another edition of Musician Accents, which is an opportunity for us to uh, better get to know uh, musicians of the North State Symphony. And today I'm privileged to be speaking with our principal bassist, uh, Mike Schwageris. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine, you know. It's a <laughs> distance learning lifestyle as a, as a music teacher and... Uh, you know, trying to figure out how to connect with, you know, musically online, which is uh, pretty hard, actually. But there are lots of things that are working. So, you know, I'm hanging in there. Yeah, it's 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 pretty challenging to completely transform a, a physical environment to a virtual environment, as we're all figuring out right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've been holding up fairly well through all of this? Uh, yeah. So... You know, my uh, school uh, went to distance learning on March 16th, and I've been doing online uh, lessons with all of my elementary, you know, K through eight students. And then uh, I have my studio at home where I teach private lessons, and that I'm all doing all online, also. So uh, Zoom or FaceTime for all of those, and that is, you know, it's different. But um, some of it's nice. Some of it's better. I think my students are learning how to be a little more independent, um, which is good. How many students do you currently teach online? Uh, I see 45 students a week. And wow. <laughs> the K through 8 school is about 300 students. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, first of all, that must be incredibly challenging and I'm sure frustrating at times when there are some logistical things that don't work out. But uh, do you right now uh, anticipate that continuing into the fall the way it is? Um, our school is um, has planned to resume in the middle of August. Oh, they have, okay. Um, with a modified schedule. So things are not going to be quite as normal and um, those discussions are still being held. So I don't know exactly what the deal is yet, but we're going to have to sort of um, limit class sizes and keep folks separated a little bit. So as far as, you know, having, we have like a 60 person choir that's grades like four through eight um, that, well, I don't know how we're going to handle that yet. We'll see. Hmm. Um, Mike, I want to quickly uh, send a shout out to your uh, chair sponsor, uh, Dr. Emanuel and Gloria Esteban. And uh, of course, amazing people, uh, just like our other chair sponsors. So let's backtrack a little bit. Um, so you've been with the North State Symphony for how long now? Um, I'm pretty sure I started in uh, maybe 2001 or 2002. Um, so it's been, a, it's, I mean, 18 years probably, yeah. So essentially since the outset, um, probably? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe the second season. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so quite a while. And have you been principal base the entire time? No, I wasn't uh, principal base uh, my first season or two. And then um, I was invited to play principal um, because of a uh, work schedule change and a musician availability change. Mm -hmm. Um, and so let's go even further back than that. You know, tell us a little bit how uh, you got started in music and how you came to pick the double bass. Was it the first instrument you ever played or, or what was before that? Uh, I think most bass players have a very interesting story. It's not usually the first instrument, um, but uh, I, I wanted to play saxophone first. This wanted to be like, first, this is it for me. But um, in fourth grade, my elementary school teacher said that my hand wasn't big enough to go around the palm keys yet, so I should play clarinet. And I was like, clarinet like doesn't look cool to me at all. <laughs> so this like, look of disappointment came across her face, and then I felt bad. And I, oh, okay, 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 yeah. So I played clarinet for a year first. Oh, and, wow. Um, then I played saxophone through elementary school and high school and college. And um, I think uh, when I was a freshman in high school, I started a, um, a rock band with some kids in the marching band there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were, um, our, our, our band room had like practice rooms in there and there was a few kids in there playing and they were like, you know what we really need is a bass player. 
And I walked by right when I saw that and I was like, I could probably figure that out. And they're like, awesome, come on in, you know? And uh, so I started playing electric bass, just self-taught for fun in that band. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, really actually fell in love with bass playing, uh, you know, and that like, so that was probably when I was 14 or something. And then um, I got my first upright bass uh, when I was a senior in high school and um, taught myself how to play it over the summer and then went to music school in Santa Barbara um, as a composition major because I knew I wouldn't be accepted as a performance major just having taught myself like bass for like six months. You know? <laughs> so um, had a really great bass teacher in Santa Barbara and uh, Nico Abondolo. And um, uh, yeah, it just went from there, you know, um, the, the guys in the band we've played um, through most of college still. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just really like uh, fell in love with uh, classical music. It's just like the ultimate rock band experience in a way. Um, so, uh, and then I did a master's in uh, San Francisco, at San Francisco state with uh, Shinji Eshima mm -hmm. and um, started playing you know after i graduated in 2001 just with the uh, regional orchestras all around uh, northern central california mm -hmm. so uh santa barbara this was ucsb yeah right yeah what a, a beautiful part of the country or part of the state to spend some time in ah uh, yeah it's amazing it's it's, <laughs> it's like the french riviera here in california <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well it's certainly quite the progression there um and uh, in your entire uh, musical life, would you say there has been um, one defining moment or experience that has sort of solidified all of this for you? Um, there's been a number of experiences. I mean, it's been, you know, 20 years now yeah. of things. So, I mean, there's been several of them, I think. Um, I, when I first graduated, I did a couple of uh, gigs with like the Sacramento Philharmonic at the Community Center Theater's a huge hall. Um, that was pretty amazing. And then one um, particular um, performance was uh, with the Albert McNeil Jubilee Singers, which are from LA. And um, I play as a ringer with the BC Davis Music Department because it's just 15 minutes from my house yeah. and uh, nice and convenient. And I, I did one concert with them there as they were a guest artist for the university. And then they did another show at the Davies Symphony Hall and called me to play that concert with them. And that was all mostly electric bass, but some upright bass and mm -hmm. it was this huge gospel choir. Um, and I, that was a standout moment for me, for sure, playing in that big of a hall. And we never had a rehearsal. Um, we just, they all, they flew in and me and a couple other guys drove in, um, in the rhythm section, we all shook hands and met in the underneath the stage and 20 minutes went through a couple of things and then did a bit of a show. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we all had the parts well in advance and had practiced enough, but um, that was a crazy experience for sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, in the the classical realm do you have any favorite composers or even favorite pieces oh, i think brahms is for sure my favorite composer um all of the the brahms symphonies i quite like um i mean just even the first symphony but um and beethoven as well for sure and shostakovich and rachmaninoff uh you know the, all that kind of war music i really like you know uh -huh. <laughs> Um, if you had to pick uh, a favorite, uh, n not, not, right, let's go outside of classical for a second. If you had to listen, or if you were like just going about your day, listening and you threw something on, um, is there a go-to genre or band or, um, something outside of the, the Brahms and, and the classical world that you might, might pop on? It's, uh, I, I, I'm, there's way too much variety. I mm -hmm. have time. And it just really depends. Um, a lot of times I can't listen to music while doing something because I'll just stop doing. <laughs> you know, I'll just stop and listen to the music and then nothing, you know. So 
if um you know i think um i, I really love the bach cello suites i'll listen to those uh, often mm -hmm. and um the you know bodicini wrote some really beautiful bass music um so i enjoy listening to that although you know in the car on a drive there's too much there's too much background noise to really hear everything so oh yeah mm -hmm. you, know, you know stuff like that i usually just listen to whatever yeah yeah pretty pretty difficult to listen to things like sibelius or Mahler in the car with a uh, the the balance the the extremes of the full orchestra tutis to the the very intimate chamber-like moments that they have uh, um keep your hand on the volume knob constantly. oh yeah yeah <laughs> um going back to the north state symphony in all of your 18-ish uh, years in the group have there been any sort of performances that have, have left more of an imprint on you than others oh yeah for sure there's been a lot i think i remember the symphony did Mahler one um and that's when my oldest son was just born and uh, which has you know a, a world famous bass solo in it um which is not terribly difficult it's just very exposed and it's sort of nerve-wracking you know oh yeah so yeah Jackson was just you know months old and we were not getting any sleep um at all and it was like that that was a very like difficult to find time to practice and feel comfortable um but um that solo went well and i ended up taking um took a practice mute and cut it in half because you're supposed to play with a performance mute on mm -hmm. performance mute doesn't I mean, it has a noticeable effect, but it's still kind of subtle. Um, so I, I had a, just a little bit heavier of a mute so that I could play like not so tentatively, which helped me feel more comfortable on being sleep deprived and everything else. <laughs> so that that one was the that was the memorable moment. And then also we did um, the Hinostera variations. Oh right. Mm -hmm. That has a really fun bass solo to play, and uh, Candice and I um, had a great time doing that because mm -hmm. the flute, or not the flute, the uh, um, the harp and bass together. That was really fun. And then, I mean, the last um, the trio concert in November. Um, yeah, that was a good time. A, yeah, I mean, to to have an opportunity like that for me is a is a big standout moment for sure. Well, I appreciate that, and yeah, what what a an interesting and fun piece. And uh, I, I remember all of the, uh, um, you know, when we first started looking at the score and the parts, like how is this going to exactly come together? But it did. And, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, um, it's always fun going through the process of a new piece and figuring out, you know, because it's, it's not a familiar entity. And I think that's one of the big things we try to do, you know, at the symphony now is, is, make all of these unknowns you know not so scary not just for the musicians but of course for our audience and uh no i i thoroughly enjoyed that performance and i hope that the three of you guys did too <laughs> oh i really liked it too. i mean it was it was a it was a big chunk to handle um along with being a full-time music teacher and having a pretty active studio too yeah so but my the principal at my school at St. James is very um she's a music person so she totally gets it and i had my <laughs> second base at school and would practice between classes and you know stuff like that mm -hmm. um, so and it's it's kind of nice to uh, have my students sort of see that process and be part of it right it's motivating for them too which is good mm -hmm. if in the next few years if the symphony could do any piece uh something like oh my god we have to do this piece what would that piece be for you uh, well you know that's a really hard thing to say i feel like we've done all of the big bass pieces um, mm -hmm. and uh you know like the ninth symphony is a is, <laughs> for a bass player is, is a good deal to do every time you know so it's nice to do that one um, yep. i'm looking forward to hopefully having that one come to uh, fruition for us next season yep yep you know that's uh, for everyone listening we were supposed to do the beethoven ninth symphony um, just a few weeks ago in uh, Mother's Day weekend in May. And of course, you know, things being what they are, you know, it was yeah. postponed. You know, I've, I've gone through season revisions for our 20th season coming up in September, at least 
20 to 30 times now. And Beethoven 9 was supposed to open the season. Of course, that's not going to happen. But uh, we hope, 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 hope that it can be our season finale in May 2021. Hopefully by that time, everything is sort of, you know, simmering down and everyone starts to feel, you know, safe enough and that we can have those those large ensembles back on stage at that point. So I'm really hoping, you know, and we've, that even the concert title of that concert has, has, has shifted from, you know, Beethoven celebration to unstoppable Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I really hope that that we can get there because you know to have that many people in an auditorium like Laxon or the Cascade, it's just you know to be consumed with sound is just something we all need to experience, especially that particular music that that sort of you know bring together of humanity and and echo echoing all of the things that we go through together. That's just it's 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 such a special piece, and I really hope that it, like you said, we can bring it to fruition. Yeah, that would that would be fantastic. The um, we at, for my school this year we had made a, a, a ode to joy arrangement for my band kids, and um, uh, just the message that Beethoven carries in that with the poem. I can't remember who wrote the poem. Schiller. Schiller, yeah. Um, it's just a fantastic message. I think we all can really use that right now because everything feels so weird, you know. Um, as human right. things, it's like we need some contact um, and uh, visual, like virtually, it's just sort of okay. But um, yeah. Well, let's 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 keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> well, Mike, uh, do you have any other thoughts? Uh, no, I'm just um, happy that you know. Um, we're still able to um, practice music and keep education going. Yep. Um, and uh, in the new forward moving movement, uh, like uh, online stuff, um, there's this website called Jam Kazam. Have you ever heard of that? I have not. So they have figured out a little bit of the latency um, problem and we, they have a space where you can perform in real time together. Really? With other musicians. It's a mm -hmm. little it can be difficult to work, but I'm trying to get some of my friends around here to get it going so that we can do, um, they're doing live concerts that you can see on like YouTube live. Mm -hmm. um, and people are in different states and all playing at the same time. Wow. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping to see if I can get some of my friends around here to do that. Maybe we can get some live music going. Even, yeah. No, that'd be great because I know, uh, generally speaking, that that technology just hasn't been there. And you know, I, I know a lot of our uh, patrons, generally speaking, for orchestras are, are probably confused when they see these um, orchestras for these 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 you know two to three minute clips where everyone's appearing and disappearing, and um, probably don't realize that that's an effort of not just the recording time of the musicians, which you know. Even a two minute clip takes a lot of time to record for a musician, especially if you put it to a click track. But then, you know, it's it's some some, you know, video editor and audio editor getting together and and doing this stuff for 50 to 100 hours of trying to put these these multiple tracks together. And it's just so much work. So, yeah, if we can evolve that technology of being able to do actual performances with, you know, as many musicians as possible over a, a large geographic, you know, uh, um, uh, distance then then you know we're certainly uh, getting farther than we are now but I will say that you know I can't even imagine being a musician in say the 1918 pandemic right I mean talk about isolation and loneliness <laughs> so yeah. things, things have at least come a long way since then yeah, thank goodness for the internet, you know, <laughs> yeah, who knows what would be going on, but um, yeah, those virtual performance videos are, are a lot, like I, I did one for some of my kids at school where we did just six tracks, mm -hmm. and it was a, a one minute and 30 second of, you know, just one of the songs we sing at school, Yeah, and it prob I probably spent 20 hours just oh, getting yeah. one minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know what it's like so uh, hopefully uh <laughs> hopefully we can figure out a way to get you know even north states of any musicians together 
if this has to continue much longer than the fall. I mean, hopefully not, but well, Mike, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to chat with you a bit and, uh, I'm sure our listeners will enjoy getting to know more about your background. And, uh, I, 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 I will say that I really cannot wait to make music with you in person again, you know, hopefully, um, for our, our, one of our concerts in September, which is a much reduced concert. Um, but hopefully that can happen as is and not with any more adjustments, not version 40 or 50. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm looking forward to making music uh, in, in the live uh, situation again. You know, um, the, uh, hearing something acoustically is just so different and it's much, much better than through the computer. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that everything comes together for the fall so we can um, have some real live music again. Absolutely. Well, it's been a, a pleasure again, and I hope that you and your family and friends are all staying safe through all of this, and uh, hopefully we can all get together again soon in person. So yeah. thanks again, Mike, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.